Today I'm gonna be talking about tourniquets and I'm gonna be going over how I have my tourniquets set up. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this because a lot of you guys, anytime I post anything tourniquet related on my page, you guys are always asking me for a video on how to set up a tourniquet. Uh, so here is that video. But I wanna give you guys a disclaimer. Uh, the way that I uh, that I have my tourniquet prepped and staged is it's what I have found to be the most efficient and the fastest and, and the, the best way to set up your tourniquet from all the training that I've been through. Uh, tra uh, training with the uh, Marines and the Air Force Special Operations Command uh, as a regular cop and as a SWAT cop. Now, that doesn't mean that this is the, the best way out there, but based on all the training that I've been through, this is the best way so far. Now, what does that mean? If you guys come across or you know of a better way to set up your tourniquet, something that's gonna make it faster for me to actually apply the tourniquet, by, by all means, Write it down below in the comments. Please, please, please tell me about it because now we're in the business of actually saving lives. And the last thing that I want to do is have it set up. You know, if I can shave off two seconds or five seconds, please tell me uh, because if we're applying this, it's a bad day. Uh, people can bleed out really, really fast, and I, I need time to be on my side. So um, that's it for that. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the very first thing that you want to do when you get your tourniquet is make sure it's completely out of the plastic. Um, I've seen, and it's kind of sad, I've seen some people have their tourniquet inside of the plastic in a pouch on their kit, on their belt, or even in their go bag in the car uh, because that's just the way it was issued or because, you know, they have to turn it back in. Nonsense. That's just ridiculous. So take it out of the plastic, um, throw that, <laughs> throw it away and then just have it uh, stored ready to go. The second step you wanna do is you wanna take the time strap from being like this, if you have it like this, that's a no-go. And the reason why it's a no-go is because under stress, you just got shot, um, your hands are bloody, sweating, whatever, right? Think about all those bad things that can happen if you actually have to pull this thing out, right? So chances are somebody's bleeding they're bleeding pretty bad from uh one of the uh extremities or the arms or anything like that arms or legs it's gonna be really hard to get this piece right here especially if you've been wearing it for a while because it gets stuck in there it's gonna be really hard to get that piece uh out in order to get this piece out right so don't do that um, especially if you guys are up north where it's cold and you guys are already wearing gloves or you can't feel your fingers already, you're just making it super hard on yourself by having this all the way across. Now, I've heard uh, some people say, well, it looks better. We're not in the business of looking good right now. We're in the business of saving, saving somebody's life or maybe even your life. So let's go ahead and make it easier on ourselves. Uh, you can actually bleed out pretty fast um, if you're shot in one of the arteries um, in the leg and the femoral or anything like that. So let's go ahead and make our life easier. Now there's three ways to stage this time strap. Uh, one way that I've seen uh, a lot of cops do stateside is they actually cut it off completely. And they're thinking is, well, I'm not overseas. Um, you know, there really need, doesn't need to be a time on there because, you know, overseas, help could be hours away uh so they you know they have the time and they write the time or whatever but uh here the chances you know or if you go into the hospital compared to over there it's like minutes compared to hours right so some people actually cut it all the way um i actually have mine stage a little bit different so that's one way to cut it all the way i don't really recommend that um the other second way is to have it like this flushed you guys can see how it's flushed right here um, I also don't recommend that, and the reason why I don't recommend that is because um, if once this thing is applied all the way in, then I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take this and put it all the way across. Now, some people will say, well, if it's super tight, you know, uh, it's not going to fall off or the chances of falling off are, you know, are minimum. Well, I don't want to take any chances whatsoever, so I'm going to apply the tourniquet, and I'm going to take this and put it all the way across. Now, how, here's how I have mine set up. So I actually have mine set up kind of like that where it gives me a little bit of an area to actually grab it and throw it over, right? But it's not so much that it's stuck on the other side and this can still go in and out, right? So that's how I have mine set up. It makes it a lot easier. So I'll have mine set up like that. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece, right? The end, the red piece, and I'm gonna put it in just like that right there and I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna have it sit up 
just like this. That's the handle. Like this right here. And now I'm gonna store it. And the reason why I do it this way is because, again, if my hands are bloody, sweaty, um, you know, full of mud, whatever, now I can actually have something to pull versus if it's like this, right? And I put my tourniquet on and then I'm trying to get this thing off and I can't, right? So this right here, by having it like that, gives me something that's not gonna be Velcro onto this and I'm gonna still be able to pull it, right? So I set it just like that. Now I come over to the top and I fold it just like this, right? So I just have it folded like this. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it in itself like that. So just kind of as fold like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in my pouch. And depending on the pouch, it's uh, it's gonna depend on how many times you gotta fold it. So, for example, on this pouch right here, I want the back piece to be a little bit further in uh, because that way I don't want it to mess up with my draw, right? I don't want it to get stuck right here to the point where I can't get my gun out or something like that. So I'm gonna make sure it's nice and low so I can still get my gun out if I need to, right? And that's it. That's all I have my tourniquet. Uh, and uh, and all my pouches just like that and once if I need to deploy it then all I have to do is I like, grab it right pull it out and I just flick it open just like this throw it over whatever extremity I need to throw it over so if it's an arm or something like that I can throw it over my arm and now again this piece because it's not velcro on the other side is a lot easier for me to grab and all I have to do is just pull and then you guys just know the rest so if you guys have any questions or anything like that, again, let me know down below in the comments. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be dropping more stuff just like this. Um, and if, again, if you guys have a better way uh, of storing the tourniquet, let me know. I'm all ears. Really, I really am, especially when it's something like this that, again, can save somebody's life. So let's go ahead and uh, le let's learn from each other, right? Let's stop attacking each other and, you know, being vicious. Um, Let's be professionals about this and just re respect one another. So you guys have a good day. Hopefully uh, I was able to answer some questions or and help some of you guys that had questions with this. I've gone a bunch of DMs about this. So hopefully now uh, you guys know and I can actually refer you to something. So take it easy. Have a good night. And until next time.